we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done Oh, the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright Good morning, just out in the garden taking a look around and seeing uh, what kind of little surprises we have today. Uh, we are getting down to the end of our gardening season. You can see some of the sunflowers in the background. They are almost finished. Uh, some of them had, I think, some kind of insect or uh, I don't know what's inside of them, but a lot of the stems on the sunflowers, they were eaten by something on the inside. So a lot of the leaves for the sunflowers you can see the damage where the leaves are all kind of dying off and it's causing the sunflowers to kind of bend over and and die when i cut them to put them in the flower arrangements that's where you can see the inside of the stems and they do have something that's kind of crawled up them so i'll have to look into that and figure out what um pest or insect ended up inside those but did get uh, quite a few sunflower blooms they're still way up there taller than me and uh, we're still getting some flowers on them so we're enjoying those i also have tons of cherry tomatoes all the cherry tomatoes that i planted this year apparently are yellow so i don't know why they all ended up yellow but uh, the rainbow blend or the mixed uh, package of seeds that i did get for those uh, apparently they're all yellow so Lots of growth on the cherry tomatoes. You can see them all the way up to the top of the trellis. And I did plant some other tomatoes from a friend of mine who grows tomatoes. So I do know those are, one of them was a white tomato. And then I have a yellowy orange one that's coming and a dark purple uh, tomato that uh, a couple of them are just starting to ripen. We did get sort of, I think the leftover rain from the tropical storm that came through last week and we got a ton of rain one day and uh, the tomatoes that were on that vine have split from all the rain that we got but i'm just leaving them to see if i can get them to go a little darker they will go a dark purple i'll show you those uh, but they do have splits in them right now i did harvest a couple of white tomatoes i don't know if anyone's ever grown white tomatoes this one obviously was a fused blossom but how cool is that? These white tomatoes, they did start out green just like the other ones. And then as they ripened, they, they have turned white. So we'll try those and see what they taste like. It'll be interesting to, uh, to see if they're, you know, if they taste different or if they are kind of similar. Oh, you and I, we got it. Purple tomatoes are down in here. Oh, there's a big spider on one of them. But you can see where they've split because of all the rain that we got the other day. So there's those ones down there and then there are some more up here. So those will turn that dark purple color. And then I think there's, oh, there's another bunch of them. These ones look really nice down in here. So those are all the Purple Prince tomatoes. This branch here that's kind of come off the trellis and out into the sun. These ones are, I think they're an orange colored one. I do have tags, but they were on popsicle sticks. So I've lost the actual name of what those were. And all of the cherry tomatoes, look how incredible those are. What an easy plant to grow this year. And they are all yellow cherry tomatoes. Each, each plant that I planted, there's probably six 
cherry tomato plants in here and they are all yellow cherry tomatoes. So I don't know if that has anything to do with them being planted together or if it is actually the seed that uh, created all these yellow cherry tomatoes. So we have lots of those. They're still doing really well. You can see a bit of the bean plant up there, those two huge beans. And they are really good, nice creamy flavored uh, sweet bean. We've just been eating them straight off the vine for now. Uh, those are the red scarlet runner beans. And I have the two tomatillo plants here. And those are the purple tomatillos and they have just started to really take off with lots of pods. We did get one tomatillo so far, but you can see how they kind of fill the husk and then they split open and start to ripen once the sun starts to hit them. So those are really cool to grow. Um, let me see if there's one. Oh, there's one down here. Uh, where is it? Can you see? There it is. So it splits open a bit. And then as the sun ripens that uh, tomatillo, it does turn a dark purple. So those have been really fun and exciting to grow, as well as my sunflowers. Before I sleep Hear the crickets, see the moon Side by side and through and through No limit to what we can do Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I The future is bright The dahlias that I planted have all blossomed and have done really well. I'm very excited about those. They were so easy to grow. Next year, I definitely will separate them out and put them in their own individual spots throughout the garden and uh, have a lot easier access to them. They are in the garden here behind me. You can see some of them still have um, some blossoms coming on them. I've been using them for my cut flower arrangements, but they are kind of hard to get to. The sunflowers will be done soon. Like I said, they have had a pest in them so inside the stem there is something that's kind of eating the inside of the stem out but the flowers have still managed to put on lots of blossoms this is a nice pale yellow colored one I like it and uh, there's some out at the pond that I had planted and I'm looking forward to saving the seeds from that one because it's kind of a like a yellowy red orange colored one and uh, I'm gonna probably harvest that one today and see if I can get the seeds and save those to plant the seeds for next year. Now this sad little spot in the garden has become overgrown with a raspberry bush, which I'll take this cane once it kind of dies off and we'll kind of organize the raspberry bushes back here and uh, we are going to trim out some trees this year to get some more sun in this area but this little section back here in the spring was full sun now not so much uh, the nasturtiums uh, they were really slow to kind of grow in here and they didn't get very big uh, bachelor buttons they don't get enough sun in here so there's very few flowers on them and the cauliflower, which I had just been leaving in here for snacks for the, the rabbits. You can definitely see the damage that the, uh, the little bunny rabbits have come in and they've eaten. But I was out here the other day and was so excited to actually see cauliflower growing in my cauliflower plants, which I thought were done. I thought these are just kind of food for the rabbits for now but they all have started let's check in even this one I think is starting to get a little cauliflower head in there so I'm not sure they're gonna be edible but 
How exciting is that? I've never grown cauliflower. This is my first year gardening. So all of this is new and uh, experimenting and definitely realize that back in here doesn't get nearly enough sun. The squash that I had planted back here um, is pretty sad. Uh, they have all gone. Uh, nothing happened with them. They did have some blossoms on them. No female blossoms. They were all male flowers and covered in cucumber beetles. So that was a fight in the beginning. I did try to use some of the diatinaceous earth, the little the white powder that you put on your plants to see if that would help control them, but they'd slow down for a day and then be right back. So not enough sun back here and the battle I had with the cucumber beetles has kind of won over on the squash plant. So no squash this year. Another plant that really struggled this year for me were zucchinis. Um, you can see that it is still growing. There were, I think, four zucchini plants in here originally, two yellow and two green. I have had no fruit on them at all. Um, they are growing beside the cucumber vine, which is pretty much done. We're, we're kind of down to the last. Here's one of the last cucumbers. Where did it, there it is. That's our last cucumber that's kind of growing there. So we did harvest quite a few cucumbers off of it, but the vine is definitely starting to die back now here at the end of August. But um, I've noticed the pests are gone, probably because there's no more flowers. Let's check the zucchini flower. So I don't really see any more of the cucumber beetles, but I have had no zucchini at all. I have seen a few female flowers start, but then nothing seems to happen with them. I don't know why this year there were no cucumbers, but, or I guess these are zucchinis. No zucchinis this year. So we're just kind of letting that do its thing and we'll try again next year. gonna walk out here to the pond and see how it's looking this morning. It's so nice out here in the mornings with the sun and these sunflowers look amazing. So let's check these out. Out here at the pond where I have some sunflowers planted in this little barrel and uh, these are the ones I was talking about that are the orangey red colored sunflowers and uh, you can see some of them I think are ready to harvest uh, to get some seeds so I am gonna try and save the seeds from these ones this year and see if I can uh, get a big row of them going next year that's exciting I, I really enjoy these uh, the sunflowers out here they do well there's a lot more sun out here so I think this area will try again uh, planting another garden out in this area it is more work to kind of water it I do use the water from the pond and then have to use just the um, the watering can and bring it up and water this uh, planter here but uh, they did really well. I love the color on these sunflowers and hope I can get some seeds from them to uh, plant for next year. So let's, uh, let's try and do that today. I'm not really sure how to do it. I'll cut the heads of the sunflowers off and then if you rub the, the tops of them, you should be able to see the seeds underneath and then I'll let them dry out and uh, see if we can get some of those for next year. I love the colors on these sunflowers. They're like the red and gold colored sunflower with um, kind of that yellowy 
outer circle on them. I'm not sure what kind they're called, but uh, let's see if we can get some seeds from them. I'm gonna take these two heads here that are done flowering. Ants on them. I think there's some seeds in there. So you can see inside them what it looks like. And I think if we just, let me put these scissors down. I think if I just pull away, oh, how cool is that? You can see all the little sunflowers inside under. What is this, the pollen? I don't know, but that is so cool. So just brush all this away. And then all of those little seeds in there. So we'll hang these up and we'll let them dry out and hopefully for next year, we'll be able to plant some of these seeds. That is so cool. I've never really grown sunflowers before and taken a look at them to harvest them, but we will see how they turn out. I'm gonna grab that other one that's up there and see what it looks like. what this one looks like it's a little smaller the seeds aren't quite as mature in this one as that other one it's a little fresher but uh, I'll leave it and see what we get from this one but uh, most of them should dry out okay and we'll save those for next year uh, the other flower that I wanted to save some seeds from are these uh, black-eyed Susans or Rebecca and they have this beautiful orangey red color to them as well. So there are a couple down here that look like they might be ready to have some seeds. So all the seeds will be in this little uh, top of this little flower. So I'll save those and let those dry out as well and save some of the seeds from this one to plant it for next year. I just love the color on these. They're so, they're so beautiful. The orange, the red. So we'll grab a couple more of these and save the seeds for me. I'm also hoping that these will reseed in this area as well. And next year they'll just come back and uh, we'll have some more of those just naturally kind of grow on their own back here. So while we're back here at the pond, let me just give you a little update on what happened with my pumpkin and squash plants that I planted it. Well, they started out so well. It was nice and sunny. The uh, pumpkin was a huge, huge pumpkin plant. It grew really well in the beginning and then I think a lot of people have had a lot of trouble this year with the cucumber beetles. They're those little yellow with black striped bugs and uh, they just completely destroyed the pumpkin plant and I also had a spaghetti squash plant out here and I, I also had a cantaloupe plant or cantaloupe or musk melon I think it was called on the tag that I planted out here and it actually has a couple of melons on it we did have to trim back this area a few days ago and as I was trimming back some of the weeds and uh, we had a birch tree that started to grow these sprouts we found a couple little cantaloupe so this is the spot that I had planted the pumpkin and you can see there's nothing left of it. I did take most of it out, but it definitely got eaten by the squash bugs. And then over here, 
I have a couple of cantaloupe. They're really small and they don't look edible, but uh, I'm just letting them grow and to see what happens. I did have some watermelon that didn't get, uh, it didn't get anywhere with the squash bugs. And this poor spaghetti squash, that's all that's left of the vine from it. So not a successful year for me with squash plants, but we'll try again next year.